Hey, welcome to Try This from The Washington Post. Try This is a series of audio courses to help you take on common challenges and learn something new without having to make a big time commitment. I'm Christina Quinn, and as always, I'll be learning with you. In this course, we're going to take on our relationships with our devices. The idea is to become more aware of why our brains get so sucked in by what's on our screens. And then we can change that behavior to make more time for activities that are better for our health. Spending time with loved ones, sleeping, getting outside, you probably know exactly what you can use more of in your own life. If you're new here, welcome. This course will have four classes, also known as four episodes. Okay, class is in session. Let's try this. So why do we get so tied to our phones and tablets? Why does that happen even though we know it's not great for us? The quickest way to get to the bottom of that is understanding a certain neurotransmitter. Can you explain what the purpose of dopamine is? Dopamine is a chemical that we make in our brain. It has many different functions, but one of its main functions is that it's very important to the experience of pleasure, reward, and motivation. And that is Anna Lemke, psychiatrist at Stanford University School of Medicine and author of Dopamine Nation, Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence. She explains what's happening inside your brain when you're scrolling through social media. We're always releasing dopamine at a kind of baseline tonic level. When we do something that's pleasurable or reinforcing, we increase dopamine above that baseline level for a period of time. We are likely getting a dopamine hit from scrolling on digital media, meaning that it's pleasurable, it's rewarding, we want to do it again. Dopamine is very sensitive to novelty or newness. Um, it engages a kind of treasure-seeking function where, where now we're you know, on the lookout for that similar type of pleasure. But the problem is that with repeated exposure to the same substance or behavior, the brain adapts, it stops releasing dopamine in response to that pleasurable or rewarding substance or behavior. And over time, it actually goes below baseline as we develop tolerance. Which puts us in a dopamine deficit. Basically, we've flooded our brain with dopamine. And in response, the brain is trying to correct this imbalance. So it stops producing dopamine. So what do we do? We keep trying to find that dopamine hit elsewhere. Is there a connection between a dopamine imbalance and our attention span? Like, can a dopamine imbalance affect our attention span? Uh, I think so, yes. I mean, first of all, what we're seeing empirically is that um, people who spend a lot of time online report that they have, they're more likely to report symptoms related to attention deficit disorder and, and the inability uh, to f be focused and attendant for long periods of time on anything. So, so my hypothesis, and it's really just a hypothesis, is that the mental health crisis that we are facing now with rising rates of anxiety, depression, and other mental health disorders, including addiction, uh, is in part due to overstimulation of our brains, too much reward, and our brains attempt to compensate to this environment, this essentially drugified world, by downregulating our feel-good neurotransmitters, including dopamine, to subnormal levels, which, by the way, looks and feels exactly like clinical depression. Anna explains more about how dopamine and digital media affect our human experience after the break. Sometimes when I've had a hard day, I grab my phone, and before I know it, I've gone down a rabbit hole of watching videos of comedy routines or really wild nail art. And Anna raised doing this herself. Watching YouTube videos, initially, it feels good, right? It's sort of an escape. I'm fully, you know, in the moment. I'm not thinking about the past or worrying about the future. But as time goes on, I begin to be aware of the tension between this thing that is less and less enjoyable the longer I do it and all the other things that I really need to be doing. Right. And that kind of tension is essentially the definition of stress. We live in an age of sort of unprecedented wealth for the most part, right, in the, in the developed world. 
Um, and and yet we are some of the unhappiest people. Right. So if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs... Maslow was the psychologist who theorized that we all have a hierarchy of certain needs. He first laid this out in the early 1940s. I know you've probably seen the pyramid. So as a reminder, at the bottom of the pyramid, the first layer is our physiological needs, food, water, sleep. Then comes what we need to feel safe, including good health, a job. Love and belonging comes next. And second from the top is esteem. And we now live in a world where most people in wealthy nations um, don't have to worry about that. And so we're at the top of Maslow's pyramid, hypothetically, which is self-actualization. Realizing your full potential, being all that you can be in this beautiful short life. Except instead of engaging in activities that would lead to self-actualization, we are relentlessly pursuing these drugified goods um, and kind of, you know, checking out. Anna calls this the plenty paradox. Basically, we weren't built to have everything available at our fingertips. We have so many choices, right? I mean, this is this is the issue, and this is also the, the source of our anxiety and stress, right? Where we're continually bombarded with choices, uh, many of them not good for us, and many of them, you know, behaviors and substances that in the short term relieve us from the burden of thinking about our choices, but in the long term actually, uh, you know, leave us worse off because now we've spent all that time doing that and these other things that I really need to be doing didn't go away. Right. You know, it's funny, like, okay, I think of myself and and friends who are just like, okay, well, at the end of the day, I just kind of want to zone out because, you know, it's work, 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 take care of the kids, work, 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 take care of the kids. And why not get as much dopamine as I possibly can? Um, Because, you know, life's hard. You know, life is hard, and I would be the last person to to judge another person's behavior, uh, you know, about what what they need in their lives or what works for them. Um, What I'm trying to say is that if indeed we become addicted to a substance or behavior, Mm. life is harder. We need to hear that. Life is harder. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, all good things in moderation, including moderation. However, I think we have to seriously ask ourselves, you know, is this how I want to spend my life, including is this how I want to relax and spend my leisure time? And what are the real costs to me and the people I care about? And like I said, it's very hard to know those costs until we've taken a break for long enough to let our brains establish a new baseline and then really evaluate what's happening in our lives. We will explain how to do just that in the rest of this course. But for now, a recap. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical we make in our brain that signals reward and pleasure. As Anna explains, social media activates dopamine in our brains, which is why it's so easy to mindlessly scroll for a half hour watching videos of high-concept manicures or whatever novel thing your brain has never encountered before. Our ancient lizard brains have not evolved to handle this endless ambush of content. And so we keep seeking out more ways to increase our dopamine levels to the point where we end up with not enough of it. And so the feedback loop continues, but we can stop it. That's in our next class, where we'll hear more from Anna Lemke on how to reset our dopamine baseline. If you are listening when this is newly released, you can hear the next three episodes on subsequent Tuesdays, March 25th, April 1st, and April 8th. But you can hear the remaining three classes right now and ad-free with a subscription to The Post. If you already have one, great. Just look for The Washington Post channel in Apple Podcasts, and you can link up your subscription there and you're good to go. If you don't yet have a subscription, you can subscribe to The Washington Post through the link in our show notes. Thanks for listening and I'll meet you in class too.